We are proud to call ourselves Mountain West Conference co-champions. Uh, and that's easy to say, hard to do. A goal that every team has. And when you have to grind it out over a 14-game schedule, you earn it. Nobody cares when you have people hurt. Nobody cares when you get a bad call. All they say is, did you win? And we won just enough to be able to hang a banner and hoist a trophy above our heads and say, this is ours. We're proud of that. Now, the rest of the story, work to be done. As we prepared for our last two games, one of the bullet points I put on the board was don't settle. And that was don't settle for a quick hard shot. I don't mind you taking a quick shot, but don't settle for a quick hard shot. And now our theme is don't settle. Don't settle to be co-champs. Don't be satisfied. Go in uh, with some drive and motivation the way we did as we finished the season with four wins. Uh, I think the quality of our people on our team allowed us to do this. As I've said repeatedly, this is as nice a group of guys as you could ever want to have and travel with. And that wins. So I'm proud of them, happy for them, and for our staff. The, it's been a wonderful regular season, and now we've got the postseason and conference tournament to look forward to. So I will entertain any questions. I haven't checked stats, but if Chase said Santa Barbara, he probably scored well in that game. Uh, uh, probably did. Uh, I think, to be honest with you, when we made the road trip to uh, Tucson and played Arizona at Arizona, uh, I believe they were rated at the time, and jumped out to a 22-4 to lead, fought them off as they made their run, and found a way to win that game. Then we followed right after that. Our next game was get over that excitement and go up to Santa Barbara. And we won a hard, hard-fought overtime game. Uh, all those things help you get where you are. Maybe even losing a 17-point lead that's Creighton at home. Uh, tell you that you have, to, you have to make sure you make enough plays. And sometimes enough is not enough. And... I think everything as you move forward helps you. The fact that we lost three in a row, everybody got a little bit nervous because we weren't used to losing three in a row. So I said here after we beat Wyoming in a tough overtime game that we had a couple of good bounces, made a big basket late to come from behind to put it into overtime, that uh, I told them, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. You got that first one. Now let's get the second one. So I think all of them, you know, gives you belief and confidence. And now that we've won four in a row, uh, we think that we've, we're going to feel as if we can go into Vegas and not have to talk a good game, but we've been playing a good game or good enough to win. It's what... Everybody has to do in their conference tournaments that they have a the true double round robin. Uh, we got a, a very big break when we didn't lose to them at the buzzer here. They had a wide open three down two. Maybe we should have lost. Uh, we played a little bit better at their place and uh, and had a had had control of the game for most of the game. It's a challenge no matter who you play, whether they've beaten you twice or you've split. Uh, these are good teams. They know what we want to do, and we know what they want to do. And the trick will be who can do a better job of saying, you're going to have to go to plan B. You're going to have to do something that's not out of a set play to score. And that will be the difference. Uh, even though we're one, they're eight, uh, they've proven that they can play with anybody, including us.
when you get into these tournaments where you have to play three games in three days, the most important thing as you move forward, if you move forward, is make sure you're, you're healthy. Make sure you have your legs. So if we would do anything on the court, it would be probably walk and talk, casual shoot. We'll tape a lane down in the ballroom, walk through stuff. Uh, we will have a coach already having broken down what he wants to show to get the team ready for either Team A or Team B, who, we'd, who we would play in Game 2 if we won Game 1. And coaches would roll right into that uh, on Monday. The fact that we play Monday at noon gives us a little bit of an advantage if we win where we'll be able to start preparing Monday, where if we played Monday at 8.30, probably wouldn't start preparing until the, mor the, the morning of. So I think it's, it's an advantage to play that 12 o'clock game. And uh, Our kids won't, won't – not remember whether it be TCU or Colorado State because they're both recently on our schedule. Uh, what we need to do, but we'll we'll have everything ready to go and we'll be prepared for that. Good players start with good players who believe they're going to win, who have had previous success on that floor not only against Vegas, but against other people. And then, to be real honest, uh, making a play in the last minute, getting a good bounce, maybe getting a call. You look at those games that we won, uh, and many of those games could have gone either way in the last possession or two. And we had we had good fortune, but we, you know, we worked hard to get to that position where make a play and you can win, uh, and hopefully that will happen again. I do think that there's more of a buzz, not just locally in the respective communities, but nationally, when they start talking about our league, when you look at all these different gurus at rate leagues, uh, we are fourth or fifth in, in, in leagues, rated ahead of the ACC, rated ahead of the Pac-12. And that, uh, that's because we've not only done well and within our league with how we've played, but we've played some good teams and beaten them in non-conference, and that's been very important. Uh, I do think we should get four teams in. I think that's happened one time before. Uh, so it's nice to see. I know that I'm the only guy that's been here 13 years, the only coach that's been here 13 years, so I'm the only one that can say this. But this is the best we've been from one to eight, one to seven uh, in all the years of existence. Uh, the the closeness between the talent levels of the team, even though some teams are a little bit more talented than others, they're all talented teams. And so they're, the surprises are there, but they're not huge surprises. Can you talk about the role of your assistants uh, during the course of the season? Obviously you're getting a lot of you know, credit for you know, uh, making a, a team that wasn't expected to, to do very much. When you win, everybody gets recognized. The head coach gets too much recognition. Uh, when you lose, the head coach gets fired, and usually everybody else with him. So I'd rather have it the first way. Uh, that being said, we have as good a group of coaches as anybody in the country, and I've said that before. And they all have a variety of hats that they wear, and they wear them well. They're all teachers. They're all involved in practice, in practice planning, in on-court coaching, in skill development, all of them. They're all involved in, in one form or another of recruiting. Uh, and then when we prepare for a game, you know, Dutch is my number one assistant. He's the head coach, associate head coach, head coach in waiting, a million different titles. Uh, he has a game. 
And then Mark has a game, Mark Fisher. Tony jumps in on both of those scouts uh, in terms of preparation. And we're all actively involved in games. And without going into great detail, they, they all have specific things that they have to do each game. And then there are things that, that just in the spur of the moment they do, whether it be to whisper in my ear a thought, whether it be grab a player at a timeout, whether it be stand up and yell. Uh, they've done a magnificent job to allow our team to be as good as we are. And the beauty of our coaching staff, nobody cares whose name is mentioned first. Nobody cares if their name is mentioned. And that allows you to have truly the good team concept that we all preach to but doesn't happen in its, the form it happens. It's happening here very often. Every team you have, there's an affinity for that team. I've said loud and clear that this team has a special place in my heart in terms of how they've banded together, how they've worked. Uh, to some degree, we had it a little easier with this team, to be honest with you, because we slid in under the bar. Uh, people weren't putting great expectations on them to start the season, as they did the, the year before as they will do next year. Uh, so they had some wiggle room to grow and make mistakes, and they grew in a hurry. As I said, we won our first three games we were supposed to win. We lost at Baylor. People thought we would lose. Then we go and we start winning some games, and, and then the, it grows in terms of who they think they are. I'm very proud of what they've done, how they've done it, acceptance of roles and responsibilities, and everybody working together. Uh, it's allowed them to, to really flourish and feel good about what they bring to our team. Coach, have you given much thought of the possibility of winning Coach of the Year in the Mountain West and the possibility of Jamal Franklin being the player of the year? That thought has not crossed my mind. Uh, I've been asked that question before. And I have said this repeatedly. When you win, everybody's boat gets elevated. It, it rises. Uh, and I would say that uh, Jamal, in my opinion, because we won, should be in the discussion between one of two or three people. If I had it, if I made the rules, I would have a rule. There are no individual awards in basketball. It's a team sport. We give no individual awards at our postseason banquet. We, we give none. We honor our seniors. We recognize everybody, but it's a team sport, and when when you win, the team wins. Yet that you know the media and the public they want to talk about what you're talking about, and there will be awards that will be given. Uh, that's all a byproduct of winning, and all of us want to win more than we want to win individual awards. Doesn't matter who you are, you want to win. Jamal is uh, wills himself into games. Uh, since we've gone small, he's always been around the ball. And we tweaked a little bit what we do offensively uh, to where he's had an opportunity to get more offensive rebounds because he's closer to the basket quite a bit. Uh, and defensively, he's guarding a bigger guy usually, so that puts him closer to getting defensive rebounds. So his stats on rebounding have been fantastic. Jamal's going to get his shots, uh, whether it's a play call for him or whether it's a defensive rebound push, and if he's open, he's going to shoot it. And we give him freedom to do that. You earn that freedom, though. You earn freedom because you perform, and Jamal has performed. He ain't perfect, but he's gotten a whole lot better in decision-making and what he does and when he does it. And uh, it's obvious that he's been a huge catalyst of this success of this team. Xavier Thames uh, 
did what people said, what's going to, who's going to replace DJ Gay? And he did it with an early sensational play. Then he had a lull in the season, and I don't know whether it was a knee injury where he couldn't quite get there, turned the ball over a little bit more than normal. I think now he's back to X. As you said, he's been magnificent the last three or four games, both with uh, assist to turnovers. He's shooting over 90% from the free throw line. I believe he made almost every shot he took in the TCU game. He was sensational. So that's what we're going to need from him if we're going to continue to uh, to win and win in this conference tournament. Uh, I, I think what we have at San Diego State, and I've said this before, is we have a women's program and a men's program who genuinely care and hope that the other team wins. That doesn't happen very many places. They fake it. But most of the time, they don't want that other team to win. They want all the recognition. They don't want pressure if they're not winning. They, here with Beth Burns, we've got uh, the, a mutual respect and a working relationship that our players sense and see. She's not out there looking at her watch when I'm on first saying, when you're going to get off, nor are we. We high-five one another, and she texts me 100 times before, during, and after our our road games. and. Before we left for TCU, we made the comment, uh, look at that end. Look at that banner that, they're, that they've hung. That's what we want to do when we come back from TCU. So I think we got a good thing going. We want to keep it going. And the best thing that could happen would be Sunday afternoon at 1, women play and win, and four men play and win. That's what we're hoping will happen.